Hello and welcome to this video. In this video we will discuss how and when to use native query editor in Metabase, its different parts, creating SQL template by adding variables, what is filter widget, its types and how to create it. So let's get started. You can compose queries using Metabase's graphical interface to join tables, filter and summarize data, create custom columns, and more. And with custom expressions, you can handle the vast majority of analytical use cases. But if you ever need to ask questions that can't be expressed using the question builder, you can use SQL instead. To start a native query builder, you can click on the console icon on the top right of the page or you can select it from the ask a question menu. Before writing a query we should familiarize ourselves with the data by studying the metadata to make sure that a column really does contain the data you expect. The SQL editor in Metabase features a handy data reference tab, accessible via the book icon where you can browse through the tables in your database, and view their columns and connections. You can also view sample values for specific columns. You can write SQL, or your database's native querying language, directly into the editor that appears. Let's start with the example. Select sum of subtotal and created it from orders table group by created at. Click the blue run button and note the result that comes back. To see the result in full screen, click on the arrows on the top right of the corner. To resume the editor, click on same arrows. You can run your SQL query by pressing Ctrl plus Enter on Windows and Linux. You can also run only the selected section of a query by highlighting the part you'd like to run before clicking the Run button or using the Run shortcut key. Let's run the same query without the created at column. It shows result for the highlighted part only. You can format the columns in the results. Let's change the formatting style of created at column from the results to something else. Similarly you can format subtotal column. Metabase will give formatting option as per data type of column. Questions asked using SQL can be saved, downloaded, or added to a dashboard just like questions asked using the question builder. You can create SQL templates by adding variables to your SQL queries in the native SQL editor. These variables will create filter widgets at the top of the screen that you can use to change the variable's value in the query. You can also add parameters to your question's URL to set the filter's values, so that when the question loads, those values are inserted into the variables. Typing cat in double curly braces in your native query creates a variable called cat. When you define a variable, the variable side panel will appear. This example defines a text variable called cat. Metabase will read the variable and attach a filter widget to the query which people can use to change the value inserted into the cat variable with quotes. So if someone entered gizmo into the filter widget, the query Metabase would run would be this. To set a SQL variable to a value, you can either enter a value into the filter widget and rerun the question, or add a value to the URL. To add a value to the URL, follow this syntax. Variable or name equals value. For example, to set the cat variable on a question to the value, gizmo, your URL would look something like. You can set a type for a variable, which changes the kind of filter widget that Metabase presents. There are four types of variables. Text, a plain input box. Number, a plain input box. Date, a simple date picker. Field filter, different filter widgets, depending on the mapped field. Field filter is special. It lets you create smart filter widgets, like a search box, or a drop down menu of values, or a dynamic date picker that allows you to specify a date range. Use field filter to create smart filter widgets. Filter widgets let you modify the SQL query before it's run, changing the results you might get. Let's say you want to create a field filter that filters the people table by state, and you want people to be able to select multiple states at a time. Here's the query. Then, in the side panel, select the field filter variable type and choose which field to map your variable to, in this case, state. Once done, you can see field filter showing all the options for state. You can select more than one state and run the query. So whenever you want to run the queries with different filters you can create variables in native editor. You can make a clause optional in a query. So that if no value is supplied to the variable, the query will still run. To make a clause optional in your native query, type brackets around the clause. If you input a value in the filter widget for the variable, then the entire clause is placed into the template. Otherwise Metabase will ignore the clause. 
Now suppose I write the query without brackets, and run it without supplying value for the variable, Metabase will throw an error. Now make the clause optional by putting the brackets and without providing any value in the filter. Rerun the query. It displays the result, ignoring the optional where clause. Now put CA state in the filter and rerun. It will show you the result only for CA state, by executing the optional where clause. In the variable sidebar, you can set a default value for your variable. Let's set variable cat value to gizmo as default. Run the query. You'll need to insert a new value into the filter widget to override the default. Let's put gadget in the filter widget to override the default value. Let's save this query. You can create dashboard filters as well, so that you can see your dashboard changing with the change in variable values. In order for a saved SQL, native question to be usable with a dashboard filter, the question must contain at least one variable. The kind of dashboard filter that can be used with the SQL question depends on the field. For example, if you have a field filter called cat and you map it to a category field, you can map a category dashboard filter to your SQL question. In this example, let's make this required and default value to gizmo. Run the query. It shows total number of gizmo cats. Now save this query with some name. Add this to dashboard by creating a new dashboard. Click the pencil icon to enter dashboard edit mode. Add a new dashboard filter. Then click the drop down on the SQL question card to see the category field filter. Now insert the different values for cat category and see your dashboard displaying the results. You can use SQL snippets to save, reuse, and share SQL code across multiple questions that are composed using the SQL editor. Snippets contain SQL code for the table and columns you're working with. It allow you to see how other analysts have been querying the data. Anyone with permissions to the SQL editor can create and edit snippets, which are then available for all SQL authors. To give permissions to the SQL editor click on gear icon on top right, select admin, Go to permissions and here enable the SQL editor for the user. Save your changes. Let's try to create a snippet. Here's a simple query with a join using the sample dataset. Let's save everything after from as a snippet to reuse in other queries. In the SQL editor, highlight a section of SQL. Right click on the highlighted section. Select save as snippet to create a snippet. A modal will pop up with the SQL statement you highlighted. Or you can click on three unequal lines, and select create a snippet and it will show you highlighted piece of code here. Edit, name, and describe your snippet. Snippet names must be unique. Click the save button to create the snippet. The snippet will now be available for anyone to use. The SQL editor sidebar has a SQL snippets menu to list available and archived snippets. From the SQL snippets menu, you can, create a snippet. Click on the plus in the upper right of the SQL Snippets sidebar to create a new snippet. Preview Snippets. Click on the down arrow to the right of a snippet to see its description and a preview of its SQL code. Insert a snippet. Click on a snippet's name to insert it into your query at the cursor's current location. Search for snippets. If you've saved over 15 snippets, a search icon will appear to the left of the plus button. Note that search results only include snippets the user has permissions for. Edit a snippet. You can change a snippet's name, description and code. From the edit modal, you can archive a snippet, which removes the snippet from the snippet menu and autocomplete options in the SQL editor. With SQL databases, you can use an existing question as the basis for a new query. For example, let's say we have a lot of data spread across a number of tables, but our users are most interested in a subset of that data. To do so, first, create and save a question that returns the result set you'd like to make available for people to query. Let's say we want to provide a result set that only includes orders for products in the gizmo category. We could create this question using the query editor, like so. We'll save that question as total gizmo. Now let's refer to total gizmo in a new query. To keep it simple, let's say we just want to count the total number of gizmo orders. We can use the hash symbol to refer to a saved question in a query. If we type out, select count of star from, hash, Metabase will slide out a sidebar where we can select a question to reference. Let's select, total gizmo, question. When we select that question, Metabase will update our code with the question's ID. In this case question ID is 9. This query returns the total number of rows in our saved question. 
This is how we use saved questions in Native Query Builder. In this video we covered Native Query Editor tools, SQL templates, dashboard filters and how to use saved questions in queries. Thank you.